Today we're going to be looking at some specific tools like Greeble and Shape Boolean. Greeble is a plugin which you can download from this website here. They have a few different versions available and a donation part of the website where you can donate. So I've just downloaded the 2015-2022 version. But back to 3ds Max, I'm going to start by opening up the Layer Explorer and I'm going to start setting up my layers for building a city. So I'm going to create three new layers. The first layer is going to be for the original splines that we put in. So I'll type that in now. And then the second one is going to be the clone splines. And the third one is going to be the rectangle that we're going to use as the city grid. So now I'm just going to start by drawing some basic shapes. So I'm going to start with a line. These lines are going to represent our roads in the city grid. So I'm probably just going to put a couple in to make it a little bit different. So I'll put some straight ones and then I'm going to put a curved one cutting across them. So we're going to be using the spline offset tool in this video as well. I've got a video previous to this one that we talk about the spline offset and how to use it. So if you're unfamiliar with it, go watch that video. We've put all of our roads in now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone them. And now we're going to select reference because we want to keep a reference and a link between the actual splines and all the other shapes for later on. I can show you how this is necessary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these clone lines and put it under the clone line layer so that we can hide and show them as we need. Give the original splines off and I'm just going to use the clone splines to do a spline offset. So I'm going to highlight all of them, go to modify and then go to spline offset and now we have our offset ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that our original lines are there, which they are and our spline offsets are there as well. So I'm going to go back over to the spline offsets. I'm going to select them all. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to change the end type to open square because I want them to represent more of a road. And then I'm also going to change the bevel to chamfer so that we have this kind of cornering on the roads. So from here, I can go back in and I can highlight them again. Forgot to turn the original splines off, so I'm going to go down to the bottom and untick keep original spline. And then that way we have our other layer with the original splines and no double up lines over the top of one another. So if I click on the line and then go into line and vertex, I can click on an individual point of the actual line itself and move it around to where I like. So you can see the spline offset is actually moving with the line live now, which is what we want because then in a later part of this video, you'll be able to see that we can manipulate the city grid just by moving the splines. From here, I need to put the actual city square in. So I'm going to go into the rectangle layer and I'm going to put in an actual rectangle. So now that we've got that, that's going to dictate where the actual city buildings are going to be. I'm just going to shift that so that it lines up with the roads a little bit better. And then I'm going to drag that back into the layer. just want to change this far right road again so I'm going to go back into modify line and vertex and I'm going to just shift that across a little bit to move our spline offset now what we want to do is we want to actually cut out the roads from the rectangle so I'm going to hide the spline go create shapes and then drop down to compound shapes and then we have shape boolean here so this will bring up the boolean function I want to change it to subtract add operands and then select the offsets and this will now subtract the shape out of the rectangles. So if you're unhappy with how the shape has turned out, that's fine because what we can do is we can go back into the splines and amend them. I'm just going to turn the grids off so that we can see it a little bit better without the lines. So now that, that there is done and I've added my operands, I'm going to go back into selecting the actual lines themselves. So again, modify and then we're going to select the line and then vertex. Then I'm going to select the vertex I want to manipulate and then just move it around. So I want to change this curved road a little bit. So I'm just going to manipulate these vertexes to get it into the desired shape that I like. So you'll notice that the boolean is amending itself automatically because our lines and our boolean and rectangle are all linked from cloning with reference in the early stages of this video.
So you can see the original spline offsets are still there along with the splines which we can continue to manipulate if we do need to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the rectangle and I'm going to use the quantify mesh tool. What this does is it pretty much segregates the actual mesh itself. This is what's going to dictate our greeble. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to amend the sizing and get it to a grid that I like. And then I'm going to go back into modify and select greeble. And this is going to randomly generate a city. So we can see all the buildings have gone in there based on the quantify mesh that I've set. And again, because we've linked all of our elements together, I can click on individual lines and then back into the vertex and I'm going to move them around. And what it's going to do is the greeble and the quantify mesh is actually going to update as well, along with everything else in this 3ds max file. So I'm just going to change the road here and then I want to move the curved one again as well. So I'm going to shift that all the way up and create more of a curved road. If I go back into the quantify mesh and I amend the quad size and I make it lower, we can see that the buildings are dramatically getting smaller. So they're a lot, they look a lot taller and a lot thinner. If we zoom in, you can see them all there like that. And we don't really want that. So I'm going to change it back to a higher value. I'll just set it to five. These are more realistic size buildings, more of a low city skyline. But you can see how the quantify mesh can dramatically change it based on what number you set the value to. Back into the Greeble tool, we can amend the minimum height and maximum height of the building. So we can change how tall or short we want them to start off at and finish. So if we want more of a dramatic city skyline, I'm going to set the minimum height to a lot smaller and the max to a lot higher. And we can also amend the widgets which sit on top of the buildings that could represent, you know, services or air conditioning, electrical. So we can change the size of them as well, height, width. I'm just going to change the color to gray as well. So it's a little bit more of a city style. And there we go. There is our randomly generated city. This is using the Greeble tool, which is the plugin for 3ds Max, the website that we got it from is at the start of this video if you need to go back and download it and it's free don't forget it's free and that's it that's how you generate a city